Here's a short review of unit vectors, and I'm going to use a 3-4-5 triangle that we're all familiar with. Take a minute to just think about which side is cosine and which side is sine. And also remember that sine and cosine, we're talking about a fraction here. This is a ratio, the ratio of 3 over 5 and the ratio of 4 over 5. So I can get the horizontal and vertical components of this triangle by either multiplying by sine and cosine or by multiplying through by those ratios, the so 3 fifths and 4 fifths. Write this out in this equation. So we're taking the 5 side, we're multiplying it by 4 fifths and 3 fifths to get the i and j components. Now ask yourself, can you just multiply this 4 fifths and 3 fifths times your 5 and it's still equivalent to one another? Because that doesn't really look equivalent. It turns out those 3 fifths and 4 fifths add together to 1 though. And so you can multiply 5 by 1. Realize these are vectors we are adding, not numbers. It's not 4 plus 3, it's the vectors. So we're looking at a squared plus b squared equals c squared to get that 1. A unit vector is a vector that has a length of 1 that can be used to break other vectors into their i and j components. Create the unit vector with either sine and cosines or with the ratio of the length of sides divided by the total length of the vector. How does all of this map out in three dimensions? And sometimes it's really hard to visualize what is going on in three dimensions. Put a couple of triangles on it. That's going to help you orient yourself and see what is what. There's two triangles, one on the ground, one standing straight up. Both of these are 90 degree angle right triangles. So a right triangle on the ground, one standing up to get the length of the vector. Look at the triangle on the ground and compare it to the one standing up. Those two share a side and if you put that together you end up with square root of a squared plus b squared plus c squared. Let's just throw a few numbers on there and we're going to just walk from the origin to the tip of that vector in the i, j, k directions. Now we have the length of the vector itself and the proportional lengths in the i, j, k direction. This is all of the information that we're going to need in order to create a unit vector. Just as in two dimensions, we're going to be looking at the ratio of the lengths in each direction divided by the overall length of our vector. Now the really useful thing we can do here is any vector of any length, if it's just pointing in the same direction, we can multiply it by that same unit vector and break it into its i, j, k components. So whether we have something that's 10 long or 6 long, if they're in the same direction, you can use the same unit vector and get your i, j, k components. Study these triangles again. Let's make it generic with dx, dy, dz, and l for length, and this is our unit vector. One convenient way to set this up is in an Excel table. So here I've created a table where I'm entering dx, dy, and dz. Next, I'll calculate the overall length of the vector. Now this isn't a force, this is the physical length of the cable, but the cable is in the same direction as the force in this problem. So we can go ahead and use the cable to figure out what our unit vector is. So here's our unit vector. We're going to be getting the ratio of dx to the overall length. I'm adding dollar signs here to hold this cell constant. So I can copy this equation down and dx, dy, dz will update, but the overall length will stay the same in the denominator. Let me just click on these cells. So here's the first ratio. The second ratio, you'll notice that length is being kept constant because of the dollar signs. And we can go ahead and check that our unit vector is 1 by just copying that square root equation over. It's the same equation, so we can just copy it again. And sure enough, it's 1. If you double click, you can see that equation. We're just getting the length of the unit vector is 1. 
Now that we have our unit vector, we can multiply our force by each component. I'm going to hold our force constant and multiply it by each of those little ratios. Copy the equation by just grabbing that lower right hand corner and pulling it down. And here you can see the equations in there. Again, we're just multiplying the force by each of those ratios. And that splits everything into the x, y, z components. At the very end, you can check that a squared plus b squared plus c squared equals that original force coming out of there. I'm just copying that equation over there too. Here's all of the equations we used. And Excel really is a great way to do this. See you next time.